As CEO of Bionics Queensland, I'm delighted to introduce Dr. Sarah Pearson, who's Queensland's Deputy Director General of Innovation. Sarah's here today to announce the winners of the Bionics Queensland Challenge 2020. Sarah will be announcing our major category winners, as well as the Early Stage Bionic Innovation Awards. When we started Bionics Queensland, our key goal was to accelerate bionic innovations right across our state, and we've been lucky to include people from different universities, from the grassroots of the community, from clinicians in hospitals, and an array of other technicians working feverishly behind the scenes to put together some fantastic ideas for this challenge. So Sarah, thank you, and I'll just pass to you now to make that incredible announcement. Thank you. Good morning, and I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of all the lands that we're meeting on today and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And I'd also like to say what a delight it is to be able to announce the winners. It's been such an incredible privilege for us in the state government, uh, particularly the Department of State Development, Tourism and Innovation, to be able to sponsor and support this program that you've all been going through. But also for me personally, I'm really, really excited to be able to announce the winners today. We're going to be announcing three major winners of the Bionics Queensland Challenge 2020, and there's going to be four early stage Bionic Innovation Award recipients. Uh, from what I've heard and also from what I've seen, it's been an incredible experience you've all been through with some really, really great ideas, amazing contestants across Bionic Mobility, Bionic Senses and Neural and AI Enabled Bionics. And in fact, the judging yesterday was incredibly difficult, very challenging uh, because of this, because you all did so well and your pictures were all so good. What I'm really excited about is the impact that you will all have, whether you have won a prize or not won a prize, the impacts that you will all have um, for Queenslanders and in the outcomes that you're going to drive are really phenomenal, particularly for people living with disabilities and chronic disease, both in Queensland and obviously across the world. I, uh, I remember back in the day, this is a long time ago, when I did my PhD in particle physics, walking past a poster that talked about, hey, you could do a master's in medical physics. I remember thinking, wow, imagine being on an impact with physics. And I am so incredibly proud of all of you for the choices that you've made and the impact that you're having on the world around us. So thank you so much for all that you do and, and are continuing to do. So on to these announcements about our fantastic winners. The first category we're going to talk about is bionic mobility category. The major winner of $50,000, the project title is Bespoke Tissue Engineered Vascular Grafts via Soft Robotics. So congratulations to the team. That's Trent Brooks Richards, Cody Alexander Fell, Sabrina Schomburg, and Mark Allenby. Well done team. You guys and gals are working with severe cardiovascular disease, which is linked to peripheral artery disease, which often leads to the loss of limbs and obviously then critical mobility. The work that you have done to develop bio-reabsorbable tissue-engineered vascular grafts, which then work with the tissues and the cells within bodies to make them regenerate is really, really, truly transformational. Thanks again for all that you do and the innovation that you have developed, which will have the potential to reduce comorbidities and enable limb use to be restored to natural levels. That's such a great thing for you to be proud of. Thank you. The Early Stage Bionics Innovation Award of $5,000. This is going to be given to Symbiotic Innovations Lightweight EEG Controlled Mobility Device. Congratulations team, that's Andrew Scott, Daisy Flood, Joe Cronin, Ella Watts and Catherine Hayday. This innovation is connecting a new lightweight compressed air roam exoskeleton with a brainware control device to provide a low cost mobility solution to assist those who are disabled or living with chronic disease. It's been inspired by young Daisy Flood, so thank you Daisy for the inspiration you've given the team. Daisy continues to grow and develop and mental abilities are really growing and developing but some of the physical challenges with mobility are obviously a challenge and this particular innovation is going to ensure that the, your caregivers and the people that work with you will be able to help identify all the issues that you need to be helped with and to be able to help you carry out your everyday tasks. So congratulations team, again, a really clear impact that you're having on human, human life. The next category, the second one, is Bionic Senses category. The major winner for the $50,000 prize goes to the project titled 
smart prosthesis with a bionic sense of touch. So congratulations, Dr. AJ Pandey, Sevda Trifonova, Shreya Singh, Oliver Campbell, Ling Kwan Kim, and Dr. Heber Kamis. I hope I pronounced your names correctly, but congratulations. This is a QUT-led project set to transform lives and the future of prosthetic devices by embedding innovative touch sensors to smart prosthetics, which is going to help create that bionic sense of touch. It's almost like the holy grail um, of getting our prosthetics to work really well. It helps get a, an accurate sense of pressure, position, and surface deformation in digital form to help the end users who have a prosthetic, prosthetic hand or a limb. You can imagine how this is going to really help people to be incredibly uh, more mobile. And what's really brilliant is you're actually going to start your work with the Brisbane Prosthetics and Orthotics Clinic based in Maruka and also delivering prosthetic solutions across Brisbane and Toowoomba. So you're going right there out into pilot phase uh, immediately. So that's very exciting for those end users. Thanks for your work. The Early Stage Bionics Innovation Award of $5,000 goes to Heroes optimizes functional outcomes of cochlear implants. So congratulations to Elliot Miller, to, uh, who's the founder of Heroes, Dr. Elizabeth Kendall, Jackson Fuller, and James Harlow. Well done, team. So Heroes is a new app that enables young people and adults with a cochlear implant or a bionic ear to fast track their rehabilitation with a clinician's platform to further um, accelerate this process. It has gamified activities, um, and Australian-based accents and phenomes uh, in an accessible and dynamic auditory training tool, which has been introduced by a clinician. So again, that link with real-life application is so important. So congratulations to you, team. The third category is the Neural and AI-enabled Bionics category. The major winner for this, uh, for the $50,000 prize, is the project A Novel Attention Atlas complemented by AI analysis of an advanced driving game for spatial attention recovery after brain injury. The project team is Dr. David Painter, Professor Heidi Zeman, Benjamin Richards, Professor Trevor Hine. So congratulations to, to you as a, as a fabulous team delivering this product. So among the best predictors of stroke recovery is the initial neurological deficit. And what this team has done is they've taken a, um, a driving game, added in some um, VR platform, a novel, novel VR platform, and they've used this with AI to help patients to recover from uh, their, their uh, disaster that they've been through and assessing the effects of the intervention on their spatial attention too. It's that wonderful combination of gaming, of VR, and also AI. Well done. The Early Stage Bionics Innovation Award for $5,000 goes to the project Deep Connections Development of a Wearable Device to Provide Fine Motor Control. Congratulations Nathaniel Marshall, Dr. Maha Bhaktash Motla, Dr. Anthony Rapisada and Connor Wyvill. Congratulations team. Deep Connections is developing an AI-enabled wearable device that will deliver neural robotic control of arm and hand movements. It's an AI-driven wearable device that will provide people living with limb loss with finer control of a robotic prosthesis. Congratulations, team. Really, really, really thrilled for you. And we have a second one um, in the Neural and AI Enabled Bionics category and an Early Stage Bionics Innovation Award for $5,000. And the project title is Cortex Brain Computer Interface. The team, congratulations to you, is Cassie Fluger, Amy Rose Goody, and Philippe Sarik. Congratulations, team. As a grassroots startup, Cortex is developing a high quality headset that simultaneously measures brain activity in a similar way to MRI and uses neurofeedback game software to reduce the adverse symptoms of neurocognitive conditions such as autism and ADHD. So excited for all of you. It's wonderful that you have these prizes to help you get to the next phase. It's wonderful to hear of those of you who are taking it to the next stage with clinicians or in with end users. Congratulations. And to everybody, as I said at the beginning, so proud of what you've done, so proud of what you're going to do and really thrilled and excited to hear about the impact you're driving for Queensland and for the world. Thank you, everybody. Well, I'd like to thank Dr. Sarah Pearson for coming and announcing our Bionics Queensland Challenge 2020 
grand final winners with such passion and enthusiasm. She has done an amazing job and I think a testament to you fantastic winners. So on behalf of Bionics Queensland, I'd like to thank Advanced Queensland, whose partnership on this challenge has been fantastic in year one. It has really enabled us to build an exciting contest between a wonderful array of innovators across our universities, our hospitals, and also the grassroots of the community. I'd like to thank too our associates within Bionics Queensland, um, the Hospital and Health Services, Metro North and Metro South Health, and our universities who have supported us from the outset, QUT, Griffith University and the University of Queensland. And this brings me also to our judges. We've had judges that are at the forefront of artificial intelligence, of robotics, of medtech technologies, of orthotics and prosthetics and the rehabilitation engineering space. So it's been absolutely diverse. The wonderful thing too with our judging is we've had the great advantage of having end users of bionic innovations involved in the judging. I'm referring here to Matthew Ames, who's a quadruple amputee. He's actually a director also on our board of Bionics Queensland. And Matthew's brought some great insights to the judging and some great feedback to the contestants so thank you to all of our judges. As you all know, this is the first year of the Bionics Queensland Challenge, and we are going on in the next year, of course, to run our challenge again and attract a whole community of innovators with a great interest in changing the lives of Queenslanders. There is so much to be achieved by Bionics Queensland as we look ahead to the future. We set about to bust the silos, to bring communities together, to really start new collaborations, to change the way we think about health technology and what is possible to really change people's lives. So I'd encourage you to look out for what we're doing. You'll see us on social media. You'll see us speaking at the local community level, explaining what Bionics means. This is a new forefront for Queensland. There's a new industry to be built. And I know that you'll all join with me with great enthusiasm because it really is changing the lives of people you know, changing the lives of a neighbour. I think we've all got a great potential here to think of new ideas that will really make a contribution to the future. So thank you. This innovation is gonna be the next sort of stage of research in the progression of treating vascular disease and especially with people who have peripheral artery disease and other conditions such as um, diabetes or in a lower age bracket it means that we can develop technologies that are more suitable for patients in that in that bracket as well. Brain injury is often associated with cognitive disability and that remains a hidden deficit because it's an internal experience of the individual. Uh, what our technology allows us to do is to visualize the internal to make it obvious to the person uh, what their brain injury is, and that gives us an opportunity for rehabilitation. Human skin is the lo longest uh, sensory network found in our body, and mechanoreceptors present in the skin provide the rich uh, sense of the world that we interact with through our physical interactions. Unfortunately, for people with uh, prosthetics, this function is lost. Our team has developed sensors that can create mechanoreceptors in their electronic emulation through the simple use of light and when married to the prosthetic devices this will enrich the life of people. It's really great to be part of the medical space and AI is taking off. It's great to be on the forefront uh, and it's exciting to see things as they progressing and help to progress to make lives better for everyday people. Winning the Bionics Queensland Challenge under the census, Bionics Census category is a huge outcome for our team. We are really passionate about translating this technology to bring into the prosthetics and to improve the quality of life of people. We were blown away. It was, it, we were quite speechless. We were up against a phenomenal uh, competition or, or fellow innovators. And so it's, it's an amazing thing for QUT, for, for us as a group. It provides exposure to this research so that we can develop it and improve patient outcomes and reduce the clinical burden. Bionics Queensland 2020 challenge has, a challenge has provided us with the platform that was much needed. So far, there was no such platform where we could all meet and interact and also get the mentorship that is required to bring some of this exciting technology to the, to the world and, and to the people who need it most. Oh, it's awesome. The community is obviously very talented. It's great to uh, have the opportunity to speak with them. Everybody's been very supportive 
Uh, and I imagine that we're going to be collaborating uh, into the future as well. It was phenomenal. I think all of our, when I speak for all of our team, we, we learned so much during this period that we don't learn within you know, our, our particular uh, area of speciality within science. And this, this has provided us an opportunity for not only exposure, but um, to, to expand our knowledge and, and potentially expand what we can do as scientists. And also I would like to thank Dr. Heber Kamis from uh, uh, UNSW Contactile Inc. Uh, for being our industrial advisor on this project. We look forward to combining the know-how and technology into the prosthetic um, products. I'd like to acknowledge my team, uh, Professor Heidi Zeman, uh, Senior Lecturer Trevor Hine, uh, Benjamin Richards. I'd like to acknowledge my uh, mother for volunteering uh, as a research participant, uh, the team at Gold Coast University Hospital in Neurosciences Rehabilitation. Uh, thank you. Hopefully we can see each other again soon. We'd just like to thank Bionics Queensland for this wonderful opportunity, Advanced Queensland and uh, the judges for uh, nominating us for this award. Hi, my name's Trent and I'm joined by Mark, Sabrina and Cody and we're an interdisciplinary team of science and engineers from the Queensland University of Technology as part of the Biofabrication and Tissue Morphology Group. Lab-grown arteries, or arterial grafts, grown from the patient's own cells, are the future of medical intervention, eliminating current complications, improving patient outcomes, and reducing the clinical burden. However, for lab-grown arteries to be realised, better control of tissue maturation and function needs to be achieved. The current gold standard for grafts from, are from the patient's own veins. This is called an autograft, which bypasses the lesion site. However, this requires multiple surgeries and is unsuitable for 40% of patients. The current alternative is synthetic grafts, but these cannot match the natural properties of arteries and remain as foreign bodies inside the patient indefinitely, thus triggering further complications. However, both do not restore native function. Research is currently looking towards tissue regenerative solutions, and thus there is an unmet need for vascular grafts that restore lifelong function. Tissue engineered vascular grafts, or lab-grown human arteries, are a promising alternative to synthetic and autografts. They use a patient's own cells attached to a bio biodegradable scaffold to fully regenerate a new artery. The regenerated artery matches the physical properties of the original artery. They are also able to grow and adapt with the patient over time, which is critical for young adults and children who otherwise need many surgeries throughout their lifetimes. There are still hurdles that need to be overcome. Current tissue-engineered vascular grafts have poor initial mechanical strength and are not personalized to the patient's specific geometry. To address these shortcomings, we created a modified autobionic workflow. Using patient image datasets, we can make patient-specific 3D vascular models that are then 3D printed into dissolvable molds. Combining these molds with advanced 3D printing techniques, we can make cellular scaffolds that are bespoke to the patient. We train the cell seeded graft using autobionic soft robots, which recreate the natural mechanical environment. This results in a functionalized tissue-engineered vascular graft optimized to specific mechanical stresses of their implant location. Being composed of biomimetic flexible materials, soft robots are capable of mimicking complex biological movement. Mimicking natural stresses is critical because similar to muscles, arterial cells can modify their environment when being exercised to create more robust tissues. Our preliminary data shows greater cell growth and alignment after just one day of stimulation. But to continue our experiments, we need to build a bioreactor with the support of Bionics Queensland. With the help of Bionics Queensland, we would like to reach the illustrated milestones with the corresponding budgets and create our soft robotic bioreactor and train TEVG prototypes within the scope of this project. We plan to have the first proof of concept by December and a fully functional autobionic system and additional deliverables by July 2021. The global vascular graft market is expected to reach 6.2 billion US dollars by 2023. Tissue engineered vascular grafts are expected to soon become the gold standard for non-emergency procedures on patients younger than 75 years old, especially for coronary and peripheral bypasses. The global soft robotics market is currently at 645 million US dollars and as an emerging platform technology is expected to grow rapidly to 4.9 billion US dollars by 2025. The bioreactor market sees the highest CAGR in medtech at 17%, and as tissue-engineered products are entering clinical trials, 
This tightly coupled technology is expected to experience growing demand. As other grafting applications such as animal-derived and synthetic vascular grafts, as well as basic tissue engineering applications such as skin grafting are already under the MBS, we expect that lab-grown arteries will follow the same pipeline in the coming years. Our bioreactor and soft robotics module should expect to see uptake from product sales or licensing of the platform to graft manufacturers, medical device testing services, hospitals and universities. Since we are student chief investigators enrolled at QUT, all our IP is self-owned. We have free or heavily discounted access to valuable services to help to protect and manage our IP under the QUT umbrella, which will help us to explore future options such as utility patents, NDAs, deeds of assignments and more. Currently, we are already taking measures to protect existing IP via team education, limitation to IP access and due diligence while publishing research. Our team would like to thank you, Bionix Queensland, Advanced Queensland and our judges for listening to our pitch. This year has been uh, challenging for all of us. Uh, social isolation has um, left us disconnected from uh, each other and also from the rest of the world. Imagine when was the last time you had a, a handshake, a high five, a hug. Uh, imagine having to live with this for the rest of your life. And this is the hard reality of people with prosthetics uh, or someone with the diminished sense of touch. Our team has developed sensors that can assign bionic sense of touch to prosthetic users by simply using the directional property of light. And when these sensors are integrated in bionic devices, uh, it will improve the quality of the life of uh, prosthetic users in Australia and across the world. Technology has come a long way. Clinically, we have seen improvement from traditional upper limb prosthetic device like a hook to restore some day-to-day -day function to a bionic hand that can provide different grips and to improve the daily activities. We have seen breakthrough of using two sensors to intuitive control of the hand movement, using sophisticated mapping system of the muscle activities to mimic hand movement. User can control the speed, the strength, the grip in the bionic limb. However, one crucial element is missing is the ability to feel the sense of touch. Rejection of the upper limb prosthetic are still relevant clinically. Why? Part of this problem is that artificial limbs cannot feel and convey the feeling to the user. They have constantly watched it for the use. Over-reliance on the sound side leads to overuse injuries. Up to 65% of people experience musculoskeletal complaints 
as exposed to 34% of individuals without upper limb absence. It is an exciting area to be able to look into underdeveloped area, a technology that would allow amputees to receive proprioceptive feedback from artificial limbs. Currently, there are no identified solutions that use optoelectronic sensing for tactile feedback in humans, meaning our solution is both innovative and new. Additionally, our sensors can be produced at a fraction of the cost of what other market competitors have. Our solution comes at about $8,000 per module, while other competitors can range between ten dollars to $20,000 per module. Not only is our method non-invasive, but the sensors are modular and can be molded to a variety of shapes. Importantly, they will remain lightweight, water-resistant, and accurate. These points put us at a great competitive advantage. Currently, the global bionic devices market is a $6.4 billion industry. By 2026, it is expected that bionic limbs will capture part of a 20% segment of bionic devices. Sensory feedback solutions within bionic limbs are very limited and therefore present a huge opportunity for our unique and innovative solution. Our team's expertise, clinical and industry connections place us in the perfect position to harness the $1.5 billion segment of upper limb prosthetics, our beachhead market. However, our solution can also be retrofitted to a large variety of medical equipment, including surgical robots. Hence, our future projection will aim to target the larger medtech industry, which is currently a $603.5 billion industry with expected growth of 4.1% through to 2026. In the early stages, we aim to work with prosthetic clinics to conduct beta testing. Once an MVP is completed, we look to build ourselves up as a reputable supply of our solution for the wider medtech market. Our team is backed by our industry partners IP. And as we continue to develop our solution and expand our market reach, we will, be, we will progressively develop further IP as required. We have developed a fully functional optoelectronic tactile sensor and have contacted channel partners to prototype the tactile feedback system with the prosthetic hand. The 50K funding can be used to progress in the R&D phase of development. This includes hiring a full-time research assistant and purchasing the necessary equipment. In the next three months, we aim to solidify our project plan and evaluate our finances and resources for the prototype. In the next three to 12 months, prototyping will take place and accelerated programs can be approached to gain more funding and assistance to reach an MVP stage. From here, beta tests can be conducted for customer feedback to ensure we deliver the best possible solution of a prosthetic arm with tactile feedback. The team is fully equipped with research infrastructure available at the Intelligent Bionics and Soft Robotics Lab at QUT. Our industry representative Heba and our qualified clinician Mr. Kim bring a unique outlook to our solution. Meanwhile, Dr. Ajay Pandey's extensive experience with sensor development along with the young and dynamic engineers will be crucial to the successful development of our product. By combining the sense of touch to bionics, our team is passionate about bringing this uh, smart prosthetics into the world to improve the quality of life of people who need it most.
my name is David Painter. I'm a neuroscientist and a neuroengineer. Uh, our innovation is a, a, a virtual reality cognitive prosthetic that trains spatial attention following brain injury. It involves a VR headset that allows us to measure attention in real time and map attention in three-dimensional space and a, also a driving simulator that allows us to uh, train attention, thereby improving person's spatial uh, perception. Following uh, brain injury, particularly to the right hemisphere of the brain, you can have damage in your spatial perception such that objects in the left visual space cease to exist. This has been uh, difficult to treat so far, uh, but using gaming technology, for example, virtual reality, VR headsets, and gaming scenarios, we're able to improve attention uh, for the first time. Uh, so today we have a volunteer uh, who is going to demonstrate uh, the cognitive prosthetic it involves two components. The first component is a uh, attention mapping task where the volunteer will search for the letter T among a series of letters. And while that's happening, we're measuring uh, spatial attention using the person's orientation with their head, orientation with their eyes and with the controller. And this produces three-dimensional spatial maps for those three different attentional sources. Uh, and we can map and statistically analyze those patterns uh, quite quickly to give an indication of whether the person has uh, damage to their spatial attention uh, perception. The second part is a cognitive prosthetic, which is a driving uh, simulator. We've used the VR headset and we've hooked it up to a modified driving game that allows the person to train their spatial perception. The idea is to have the person uh, repeat the driving simulator multiple times uh, and through that they can train their spatial attention. One thing that we do plan to do is to use uh, artificial intelligence, AI, to establish the relationship between basic three-dimensional 360 degree spatial attention and performance on the driving simulator. We can measure attention during a simple letter task. We can do the same procedure of measuring attention uh, during the driving simulator. And we can use artificial intelligence to analyze those patterns of attention to redesign the driving simulation to tap those aspects of attention that are most closely related to the brain injury. It's also that it's debilitating. So you have an injury to the, the brain, you're released from the hospital, you go back to the home environment, but life is unlivable. There really aren't treatments at the moment that can help you recover your spatial abilities. We have a methodology using virtual reality and driving simulation that we can improve the person's spatial perception in the hospital at the home environment. Uh, for the first time. It's fun. People enjoy it. We've tested it with people with brain injury uh, and they would gladly undertake these rehabilitation programs using virtual reality. So I think it's an exciting uh, area uh, for investigation and we're ready to start right now. That's right, David. I'm uh, Dr. Trevor Hine. I, uh work in the School of Applied Psychology at Griffith. It's a way of bringing in gaming into a assessment of spatial attention, as well as having it as part of the rehab program. So in, in that way, it's fun. In that way, uh, people are more likely to take it up. And in that way, they're more likely to be able to function as best they can in a home and hopefully a driving environment. The technology is now at a sensible price point in hospital settings, uh, at the home, and it's become increasingly easy uh, to develop these virtual reality uh, platforms. So we can use these video game technologies to make people's lives better.